Aloha mai kako, everybody. So I'd like to introduce you guys to Professor Jun Lee. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jun Lee. I am the... I, I don't teach, so I'm not a professor. I'm the Director of Student and Academic Services at the School of Architecture. Um, and so I'm just going to take you through some just really basic facts about our program. And then if you want to stop me somewhere in between or if the chat room has questions, I can pause and we can get to them or we can do them all at the end. So we are the School of Architecture at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And we have three degree programs. The first one is the undergraduate degree. It's the Bachelor of Environmental Design. The second one is the Master of Architect Landscape Architecture. And the third one is our Doctor of Architecture degree. So the Bachelor of Environmental Design uh, you can read it here. The Bachelor of Environmental Design is a pre-professional four-year degree program, and it emphasizes the study of both the built and the natural environments. Whoops. So this is the program chart. Now, um, you might be able to take a closer at, look at this later, but what you do need to know about this program chart is that um, we do run our general education courses alongside of our architecture courses. So if any of you plan to attend a community college before coming to UH Manoa, um, please keep that in mind because the years you spend at the community college will add to the years that you, um, you need to be here. So general education requirements, English, history, Hawaiian studies, social sciences, math, physics, and four years of one language. Um, so as I was mentioning, this is articulation of EAEC courses from Honolulu Community Colleges. So if you do go there, we really want you to also get in touch with us to talk to us about what you can do to help get some of the course requirements done. This is AEC 237. It comes into Manoa as Architecture 100. And the combination of AEC 118, 210, and 217 come into Manoa as 220. Now, the big question. Oh, let me just go through this real quickly. Uh, most people wonder what environmental design is and what it says here is the process of addressing the surrounding environmental problems uh, when devising plans, programs, and policies, buildings, or products. And you'll get to understand maybe the diversity of careers when we get to that toward the end. So, why? Why come to our program? So one of the things is that we're uniquely located between the East and West, right in the middle of the Pacific. And our program covers studies of architecture, placemaking, design, decisions, philosophies, construction methods. Um, and, and it spans both the Eastern and Western cultures prepare students to be both designers and problem solvers. Um, it also, what you learn here is the design process. Um, and we feel that a design degree is not just learning how to do something, but it's also learning to ask what if. So in the end, we say that both the education you get and the experience that you receive here and, all el and, and in real life helps you get there. So hands-on opportunities. Now, when you get here, um, this is one of the few programs, although I know some of the other electronics and 
they have hands-on things. But from here, from day one in your 101 studio, it is a hands-on experience. And so we really, we really stress that. We know that the computer is important for a lot of people, but in the first year, we really do start with fundamentals. And we really, and if you are creative and if you, and you understand beauty and if you can think of creative ways to approach old problems, that is part of the process that we, um, we have here. We also have what we call the University of Hawaii Community Design Center. And in that Community Design Center, our students are able to, to work as student interns um, for an, and while they're in school or even after they graduate. And the neat thing about the UH Community Design Center is that you actually partner with faculty as well as outside agencies and you learn how to work with the community and the agencies on real life projects. So you do attack things like affordable housing, sea, life, sea level rise, and aging infrastructure. So when we talk about design, we're designing for ourselves, we're designing for others, and we're designing for the community. Now this project, is the Albizia project. And it was one of our doctorate students project. And you might, if you've been on campus, this structure, this photograph is before it was completed. But this was the framework of the structure and it sits on the corner of university and what is that, Metcalf? Um, and this, these photos coming up now are just an example of the work it took to, to form some of those timbers and to get it framed and up. So if you like woodworking, if you like 3D modeling, um, we have it all here. <laughs> and this is part of the studio culture. They work really hard, they work long hours, and they just try to sleep and catch Catch a, catch a nap whenever they can. Okay, admission to the environmental design program. Um, our admission to the BENVD is with the undergraduate admissions office. And if you are familiar with that, it simply means you submit your admission application, you pay the $70 fee, you submit your official school transcripts and your um, standardized tests. Now, after you graduate from the Bachelor of Environmental Design degree, I'm going to go quickly through this. You can you can enter, you can uh, you can apply for admission to the Master of Landscape Architecture degree. If you want to um, do the work of a landscape architect, you can go into that program. It, it just the field of landscape architecture comprises the analysis, planning, design, and management of natural and built environments. And we're in a really unique situation because we have an indig indigenous community here. So that marriage of the, the study and the, and the, and the um, culture, the local culture here is really, really unique. You can go to the MLA program or you can apply for the Doctor of Architecture degree. This is the advanced degree for architecture. This is also what we call our NAB accredited degree. So um, if you want to become a licensed architect, you, in order to sit for your licensing exam, you do have to have a degree from a NAB accredited program. And so normally a lot of our students go through our four year Bachelor of Environmental Design degree, and then they move on to the Doctor of Architecture degree. So what kind of skills should you have? Analytical skills, strong communication skills, visual and spatial creativity, strong collaboration and team building ability, effective use of software, technology is such a huge important part of this, and there's a high attention to detail, accuracy, and precision. 
So this is just a little thing about becoming an architect. This is taken from um, the N NCARB, which is a affiliate organization, and they handle the, um, the students as they're uh, collecting hours under uh, registered architects. And this is just, they have to log in hours to, in order to um, learn all the fun fundamentals from a, from a registered architect. And then with that and their degree, they can sit for their licensing exam. Okay, so just if this is your goal to become a licensed architect in the state of Hawaii, the licensing is, is handled by the Hawaii Board of Professional Engineers, Architects, Surveyors, and Landscape Architects. In Hawaii, we are, we you, in Hawaii only, you do not need a degree from a NAB accredited program. So if you think you're only going to practice in the state of Hawaii, you can actually then ultimately become a licensed architect in Hawaii. So the answer to this for the state of Hawaii is no. Um, and so in the state of Hawaii, again, does your board accept experience as an alternative means to satisfying your educational requirement? And it's yes. And how many years of acceptable experience are required with a four-year professional degree in architecture, which is what our BENVD is, and that's five years. Okay, careers, just really quickly, you can become a designer, you can become a specialist in, in politics, the city, the state, you can do, be an interior designer, a landscape architect, you can become a spec writer, or a project manager, or a construction manager, a teacher, and these go off a little bit further to um, away from architectural design. But because of the creative aspect of it, a lot of people do then become industrial designer, furniture designers, graphic designers, um, or even photographers. Okay, questions? We had a question. Uh, June, um, could you tell us a little bit about online classes and how um, the School of Architecture is adjusting to uh, teaching classes in the fall. Will you guys be going completely online? Okay, so all of our, it's, it appears that the majority of our lecture classes will be online. There are some faculty who are indicating they would like face-to-face -face if the class is small enough, but given the information we've received um, on Friday from the provost, um, we're not quite sure whether we're gonna be able to, to do that. Um, that said, the studio classes are the ones that we're trying to figure out how to have sort of a happy medium where they, it's, it, it may be hybrid, where they may meet um, occasionally with small groups of students that especially like that 101 studio video that you just saw um carla is planning to break up her classes into small groups she may or may not meet with them individually but she will be teaching a large part of that studio online so it's going to be really interesting given how much hands-on work they have but the majority of the lecture classes will be online yeah the majority of the classes will be online. The lecture classes. Lecture yeah. classes. Okay. Yeah, and then the studios right now, we're just trying to figure out the space and to see how many of them really want to have some face-to-face -face time with some of their students. Okay. We had a clarification from earlier on in your presentation, four semesters of language, right? Four semesters, yes. not four years of language. Four semesters. I'm okay. sorry, did I say four years? <laughs> Just a question. <laughs> four semesters. Four semesters of language. <laughs> okay. And then we saw from the video that there's, um, you know, you guys really try to facilitate a collaborative work environment. Uh, one of the questions that came in is, um, are the projects mostly individual or are they in groups or a combination of? 
It's really a combination of, and it really depends on what level of studio you're in. Um, what you're going to find when you first enter and you're in 101 is that you're going to have a lot of in individual things that you're going to have to do. And as one of the students indicated, he felt like he only had a day and a half and, the, and then another project was due. And those are very, those are somewhat simpler exercises. And what she's trying to do is she's trying to build a foundation that is cumulative. So you learn something and you build upon that and you build upon that. And that's why they're short fired. And then somewhere along the way, she may have a, a longer, more complex project. And sometimes it is in teams. Um, given the COVID situation though, it's just more difficult um, for students to work in teams. Last semester, all the studios that had originally planned team collaborative projects had to regroup and everybody, and it all became individual projects. So I think the, the collaboration is more um, just because of the situation we're in. Yeah. A question came in about the doctoral program. Um, are there prerequisites for the doctoral program of architecture? You can have, if you're here and you do our undergraduate BEMVD, you can apply for admission to the doctorate program. If you have another degree, whether it be a bachelor or a master's degree in another program, it doesn't even have to be architecture, doesn't have to be environmental design, you can still apply for admission to the DR program. In, if you have a degree in unrelated fields though, you do have to add an extra semester to the three-year program. Okay. And then we had a question uh, clarifying, they'd like some clarification on what you said about uh, starting at a community college and entering into the program to make sure that they're maximizing their time. Um, right now, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, was no, that please it? please clarify, yes. Okay, so right now what happens is students who enter a community college, typically you spend two years um getting rid of or 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 taking all of your general education courses what happens is because our program is um our general education and architecture courses run alongside starting from the very first fall semester that you're here for instance this fall you're going to be taking students will be taking architecture 101 the studio you'll be taking 100, but most students will also be taking History 151, English 100, and Hawaiian Studies 107. So what happens is when all the, when students at the, at the CCs take their math and their English and their bioscience and their social science um, and their language, what happens is you've done half, you've done a portion of the program, but the problem is that our studio sequence runs three and a half years. There's no way to shorten that. There's no way to double up on it. So immediately, even if you have five to seven courses done, that already says that you're going to be here for three and a half years. Now, the only upside to that is that every semester, you won't have a full credit load. So you're not going to be running 16 credits a semester. You might be running 13 or 12 or nine. Um, so what that does is it, it, it sort of eases up on the pressure because most of our students want to spend all of their free time on their studio. So it just allows them a little more time to do that. Good information and it's always good to facil facilitate discussion. So um, can, can you, uh, is it okay to post um, how we can get in touch with you if, if students have further follow-up questions? That's awesome. me. That's my email address. Please contact me anytime you want to. And if I can't answer the question, I will refer you to someone who can. All right. Okay. Awesome, guys. Thank you all.